Hello all, I am Penicillin G. You can call me Pen G. But do you know my history? Do you know who I really am? World War II raged on. Soldiers lay wounded in the trenches, their bodies ravaged not just by bullets, but by infections. Gangrene. Septicemia. Pneumonia. The battlefield was not just land, but flesh itself. And I was their only hope. I was a potent force, engineered to dismantle bacterial defenses with precision, yet fragile within the harsh environment of the human body. My power was undeniable, but so were my limitations. In battle I faltered. My greatest threat was not just bacteria but the stomach itself. Its acid broke me down before I could reach the bloodstream. Strength and vulnerability defined me. If I was to fulfill my purpose, I needed protection, an armor to preserve my power and extend my reach. I was not meant to be found. I was an accident, an oversight, a moment in a petri dish left behind. It was 1928 when Professor Alexander Fleming returned from vacation to his cluttered lab. His eyes scanned his petri dishes, routine bacterial cultures of Staphylococcus aureus. But something was strange. A moldy growth had crept onto the plate, a contaminant. Yet around it, there was a clear zone, an empty battlefield where no bacteria survived. Fleming's mind raced. What force was at play? What had this mold, Penicillium notatum, done? And thus I was born. Scientists extracted me, refined me, and mass-produced me. But to increase my yield, they turned to a cousin, Penicillium chrysogenum, which produced me in far greater quantities. I have a tiny four-membered ring, small yet formidable. This beta-lactam ring is my weapon, disrupting bacterial walls and breaking their defenses. But it is also my greatest weakness. I am a bicyclic system, with a beta-lactam ring fused to a thiazolidine ring, creating both strength and vulnerability. Normally, carbon-carbon bond angles rest at 109 degrees and 28 minutes, but within my beta-lactam ring, I am forced into a strained 90 degree angle, a tension that makes me highly reactive, primed for attack yet fragile. My thiazolidine ring, stabilized by sulfur, supports me, while if you look carefully you can identify two amino acid systems such as valine and cysteine form my 6 amino penicillinic acid core, the foundation of my identity. The elements that constitute my structures as follows, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But on my 6th carbon, I hold an acylamino side chain, a feature critical for all my derivatives. Every modified version of me has relied on changes in this acylamino group and the incorporation of electronegative groups to enhance my stability and effectiveness. At the top of my beta-lactam ring, a cis arrangement of hydrogens, both on the same side, is essential for my biological activity. Additionally, my acylamino side chain at the top left acts as an electron withdrawing group, pulling electron density from my beta-lactam carbonyl and making it an even stronger electrophile. Bacteria, ancient warriors, have honed their defenses over century. Their armor? A fortress of peptidoglycan, a shield reinforced to withstand pH fluctuations, temperature variations, and osmotic stress. At its core lie two sugar backbones, N-acetylmeramic acid, NAM, and N-acetylglucosamine, NAG, the foundation of their survival. But I was their undoing. My strategy? Impersonation. I bore an uncanny resemblance to the Diala Diala sequence, a crucial residue in their cell wall synthesis. The foolish organisms could not tell the difference. Their own transpeptidase enzyme, the key architect of their walls, mistook me for the real thing, binding to me instead. And with that single error, their fate was sealed. The war was relentless. Gram-positive bacteria were easy prey. Their thick but porous peptidoglycan layers breached. I struck them down with ease. But then I faced a different breed of enemy, gram-negative bacteria. They were fortresses. Their outer lipopolysaccharide LPS membrane was an impenetrable shield. I couldn't get in. The few doors that existed, porins, were like heavily guarded checkpoints, filtering out invaders like me. I was locked out of the battle. And then the bacteria did something no enemy had done before. They fought back. Alarms blared in the bacterial fortress. Scientists in lab coats rushed frantically as a new enemy emerged, the beta-lactamase enzyme, tearing through me like artillery fire. Bacteria fought back. Staphylococcus aureus, once defenseless, had evolved. It produced beta-lactamase enzymes that shattered my very essence. My greatest strength, my beta-lactam ring, was torn apart. I was failing. The war was slipping from my grasp. The wounded lay in rows, their bodies ravaged by unseen foes. Tablets? Impossible. My only path to the front lines was through painful injections. 
In dimly lit tents, under the flickering glow of lanterns, medics gritted their teeth as they plunged needles deep into soldiers' muscle. Some winced, others clenched their fists, eyes burning with pain and resolve. There was no other way. Here, at my sixth position, scientists played their hand. They changed me. They redefined me. And I was reborn. They formed a cocaine salt, slowing my release and prolonging my action, allowing me to fight for hours instead of minutes. Benzathine Penicillin, 1950s. Even longer action, up to four weeks in the body. But just as I adapted, just as I became stronger, a darker force rose. At first, they tried adding a 2,6-dimethoxybenzyl group at position 6, hoping to make me stronger. But it was a failure. The modification erased my similarity to Dialadiala, and I lost my ability to bind bacterial transpeptidase. I was useless. But then came the amino revolution, a breakthrough that reshaped my destiny. The scientists gave me an amino, an H2 group, and I was reborn as ampicillin. Yet, even that was not enough. To truly enhance my power, they introduced the hydroxyl, OH, group, and amoxicillin emerged, a warrior stronger than before. With this transformation, I could infiltrate the defenses of gram-negative bacteria, slipping past their barriers. But even in my newfound strength, one enemy remained beyond my reach, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, a formidable foe that refused to fall. The quest for greater power continued. Scientists placed their carboxyl, COH, group on the alpha carbon of my bulky side chain. This simple yet powerful modification transformed me into a new class, the alpha carboxypenicillins, carbenicillin and ticarcillin. This ionizable carboxyl group became my key, improving my ability to penetrate gram-negative cell walls far better than before. But my battle was far from over. Beta-lactamases emerged, threatening my existence. Scientists armed me with oxacillin adding bulky isoxazolo side chains at my sixth position in this modification, including the addition of a chlorine atom in cloxacillin. Now, I could withstand penicillinase-producing staphylococcus. To enhance my stability and absorption, scientists developed the campicillin, a doubly activated penicillin ester that remained protected until it entered the body, where it rapidly cleaved in vivo to unleash its full antibacterial power. Even with all my upgrades, beta-lactamases persisted. Scientists gave me a new ally, clavulanic acid. It didn't fight bacteria itself. Instead, it bound to beta-lactamases, shielding me from destruction. Combined with amoxicillin, I became amoxicillin clavulanic acid, the ultimate antibiotic duo. A broad-spectrum, beta-lactamase-resistant penicillin, capable of treating respiratory, urinary, and skin infections. Penicillin G, first discovery, effective against gram-positive but acid-sensitive, for only. Procaine penicillin and benzathine penicillin, formulated for slow release to extend penicillin G's duration but still gram-positive. Penicillin V, acid-resistant, due to oxygen modification in the phenoxyethyl side chain, allowing oral administration but still gram-positive. Methicillin, first beta-lactamase-resistant penicillin due to bulky side chains but lost gram-negative coverage. Oxacillin and cloxacillin, further improved beta-lactamase resistance using bulky side chains but still ineffective against gram-negative bacteria. Ampicillin, first broad-spectrum penicillin, introduced amino, NH2, group, making it the first broad-spectrum penicillin, effective against some gram-negative bacteria but beta-lactamase sensitive. Amoxicillin, broad-spectrum, better absorption, added hydroxyl, OH, group for improved oral bioavailability, but still beta-lactamase sensitive. Carbenicillin and ticarcillin, extended spectrum for gram-negative, introduced the carboxyl, COH, group for better gram-negative penetration, pseudomonas, but remain beta-lactamase sensitive. Bacampicillin, prodrug of ampicillin for better absorption but still beta-lactamase sensitive. Beta-lactamase inhibitors, clavulanic acid, combined with penicillins to overcome beta-lactamase resistance, amoxicillin and clavulanic acid broad spectrum and beta-lactamase resistant. Bacteria continue to evolve. They now produce extended spectrum beta-lactamases, ESBLs, and carbapenem resistant strains. I am penicillin, the antibiotic that changed the world. The battle for survival was endless. But I was no longer fragile. I was no longer just a miracle. I was evolution. My journey wasn't mine alone. I owe my existence to the visionaries. Alexander Fleming discovered me, the mold with the power to kill bacteria. Howard Florey and Ernst Boris Chain purified me, turning curiosity into a weapon. Edward Abraham unlocked my secret. 6 amino penicillinic acid, 6 APA giving chemists the power to modify me. Dorothy Hodgkin, 
solved my structure with X-ray crystallography, paving the way for my transformation. With gratitude to the relentless pursuit of science, where discovery meets resistance, and evolution sparks innovation. Scientific narrative and conceptualization, Dr. A. Jarad Suresh, Principal, SRFOP, Sryer, DU. Technical and informative insights, Dr. Karupa Mohandas, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmaceutics. Sifap Sryer, DU. Editing and post-production, MS Reshma Devi Sentonatan, Research Scholar, Department of Pharmacognosy, SRFOP, Sryer, DU. A tribute to the warriors of medicine, the unseen battles within, and the minds that refuse to surrender. Thanks for watching.